Do you feel like you're having trouble getting your YouTube shorts to go viral? Whether you love them or hate them, you've heard us say this before, you should be making YouTube shorts today if you're trying to grow on YouTube. And this isn't just us saying this, this is coming directly from YouTube themselves. Creators who are uploading both short and long form content are seeing better overall watch time and subscriber growth compared to those who are only uploading on one format. Well, hey, that sounds promising, but if you're just starting out, things could feel a bit daunting or confusing. You're trying to crack the code and get people to actually watch your shorts. And in fact, here at vidIQ, we're also trying to crack that very same code. And after studying hundreds of channels, we think we have some answers for you. Beating the YouTube Shorts algorithm is possible, but it is going to take a brand new skill set for those of you who are new to uploading short form content. So it's time to take everything you know about optimizing a long form video and put it aside. Because if you're trying to grow on YouTube Shorts, we're gonna talk about how this is gonna be a little bit different. With YouTube Shorts, you have maybe about three seconds or so to get them to stop scrolling and give the rest of your short a chance. And if they do give your short a chance and the viewer watches the rest of it, YouTube is much more likely to push that short to even more people. With that in mind, there is one thing you as a creator need to focus on whenever you make a short, and that is your hook. Your hook could be some text on the screen or something you do or say, or maybe even a sudden camera movement that somebody sees when they scroll to your short. So as we go through these today's, actually let us know in the comments, what are some hooks that you've seen on shorts that got you to stop scrolling? Everything you do in the hook of your short is all about raising curiosity. Now, normally you would use a title and a thumbnail to raise that curiosity, but with shorts, you don't really have that opportunity. You kind of got to think about it like acting out this title and thumbnail in a YouTube short in the first couple of seconds. You've probably seen some examples of this, one of them being, have you heard about? There's always the tried and true, they don't want you to know. Do you know about the black baby test? No? Well then, let me tell you. Have you ever heard of the region beta paradox? You might be suffering from it right now. And something that works on me all the time is you've never seen anything like this. These type of hooks can work really well for any type of YouTube topic that you wanna cover and gain a new audience for. You're taking something that a person wouldn't otherwise care about and turning it into kind of an interesting factoid on YouTube Shorts. This is a raw steak, and this is me putting that steak into the dishwasher. Okay, trust me, check this out. According to Mythbusters, dishwashers can get up to nearly 150 50 degrees. And everything you do on YouTube Shorts is going to need to apply to somebody who's brand new to your channel and perhaps brand new to your topic. Going forward, keep those viewers in mind as you record your shorts. Anyway, back to the subject of raising curiosity. You could get people to be curious about something that specifically happened to you, one of your own experiences. Something like, this is the most amazing product I've ever seen, or I would never do this and this is why. I never buy silk. And this is the strange reason why. As a kid- Just be careful not to give too much away in the first few seconds so people feel like they actually want to finish watching the short. This is the most powerful charger I've ever laid hands on. And there's still a ton more examples to go through here for raising curiosity. I was today years old. I was today years old when I found this out. It took me 19 years to figure out news stands for notable events, weather, and sports. Never knew that. Questions I get asked a lot. I asked Google. I asked Google what the longest jump in history is. Three things I can do. Here are three things I do before every flight coming from a lawyer who travels six months out of the year. I'm sure by now as a seasoned YouTuber or YouTube viewer or both, you know the importance of a call to action. We generally think of these for ourselves, right? When we're trying to get someone to leave a comment or subscribe or leave a like. But with shorts, a call to action can be the entire hook of a video. Something as simple as try this. Try this to get more views on your next YouTube short. Or you gotta try this. You gotta try this with your phone. Put your speaker on your mouth like this. Doing this gets people excited that they're gonna learn something new, maybe a new fact or a new skill, as long as they continue watching your channel. You could do this by opening with a different kind of question, such as, did you know that? Did you know that this book is poisonous? And this woman discovered it. Hi, Nas Daily. Or maybe crazy facts. Crazy body facts that you probably didn't know. Did you know that your brain generates enough electricity just by thinking? You can also get people really thinking about things they wouldn't have thought of before. You've probably seen videos that Let's start with, have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered what the most viewed YouTube video is? We got uh, just go, music, passenger. let her go. Or by asking the question, is it possible to... Is it possible to feel high with pressure points? Well, according to this doctor... Let's shift.
shift gears a little bit though. What if your channel is about reviewing products? Well, you could keep it really simple and just compare two products, X versus Y. Biggest smartphone versus smallest smartphone. Which one's actually more practical? Or you could mention why you'd never try a product. And that kind of negativity can get people to stop scrolling. Why I would never style my maxi skirt like this and how I would change it. If you want to push a service or talk about things like fashion and makeup, you can educate your viewers on the do's and don'ts that they should follow. Do's and don'ts of coat shapes. Don't pair a puffer coat with proper shoes like loafers or ballet flats. Or simply how to do things themselves. How to create festive outfits if you're a minimalist. Try pairing some sheer socks or tights underneath your jeans to make them feel more evening appropriate. Everybody wants to feel included. It's as if our brains are literally wired around FOMO. So include your viewers in your life and in your various experiments. For example, today we're gonna see. Today we're gonna see how much water this Scooby-Doo can hold. I'm trying this so you don't have to. I'm doing this so you don't have to. I've been hunting for the dumbest world record. Watch me. Watch me try to fix the squishy. It's in really bad shape. Today I'm going to. Today I'm gonna find out if a big lighter really does burn for 55 minutes. And we all know there's a trick that works for even long form videos and that is to make a list. These generally keep people watching all the way to the end. And you can do this in shorts too. For example, seven best. Seven tastiest smartphone cases. Starting off with the ice lolly. Five products you won't believe exist. Five Amazon products you won't believe are real. Number five is the sun visor fan hat. Top three. Top three YouTube mistakes. If you're trying to position yourself as an educator on a specific topic, then hacks is a great way to share something new with somebody. Everybody loves a quick hack, and you can say that this hack is gonna help you reach whatever goal that is in three easy steps. How to become a mermaid in three steps. First, go to a friend's birthday party and push her away. Here's how to have the best blank of your life. Here's how to have the best sleep of your entire entire life. Make sure your room is dark. There's always simple how to. Here's how to write an entire book using ChatGPT. Step one, you say, hey, I wanna write a book about this topic. Can you give me five, 10 title ideas? And then of course, just outright mentioning hacks themselves. This could get your YouTube shorts a lot more views. Another kind of cheeky thing you can do is create some sense of urgency as soon as people scroll to your short. You could straight up ask people to stop scrolling. Wait, stop scrolling. Straight on your back. Why are you always slouching? Do you see how tense your forehead is? Relax it. Relax it now. Or you could talk about how doing this right now is the most important thing of your life. This is the most important decision you can make on your YouTube channel, and a lot of people get it wrong. You've probably stumbled upon a bunch of shorts by now that talk about making more money. Everyone wants to make a little bit of money on the side, and having somebody spoon feed that information to you is pretty tempting as you're just kind of swiping through shorts. If you know a good way to make some money, you can give people a little bit of a monetary incentive to stop scrolling. You could talk about making X dollars a day using a specific product. There are four ways to make $800 a day using ChatGPT. The first method is to sell birthday cards with a poem on Etsy. Or going back to hacks, hacks that will save you money. Art hacks that'll save you money, part one. First up, we have these plastic food containers. All you do is add a couple of paper towels to it, spray it until it's damp, add your acrylic paint like you normally would, and this makes the paint not dry out. So there you have it, your ultimate guide to hooks that work. What this really takes though is getting out of your comfort zone and beginning to actually make some content. Creating content that gets people to stop scrolling is a learned skill and it's gonna take you practice. But of course, practice takes time and you're probably here looking for a bit of a cheat code. So check out this video right here and maybe you'll pick up a thing or two. Also, what do you think of my new studio? I think it's coming along. It's not fully done yet. We're kind of under construction. Stay tuned.